Uh, thank you everybody for uh, listening to me today. Um, today I'm going to talk about something that's uh, pretty important to me. It's about the cost of shark finning. So I want to ask you, do you think that we as modern human beings still commit acts of barbarism? Do we still commit barbaric acts as human beings in this day and age? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think so. And I think shark finning is one of those places that we do that. I'll cover the statistics. Oh. So, every year, 100 million sharks are killed in the shark finning industry. That's 11,500 every hour and over 200 every minute. So, in the time it takes me to talk to you about this today, over 2,000 sharks will have died in the process. Now, where do these numbers come from and how accurate are they? Well, they come from the FAO, the uh, Agricultural Committee for the uh, United Nations. Basically, those are voluntary numbers that are given to the, the United Nations from each individual country. So that's uh, their fishing industry, and that's the voluntary numbers they give. That's not including any of the illegal bycatch, any of the illegal poaching, or the undocumented uh, cases. So the true number is closer to about 270 million sharks killed every year, wow. which is uh, pretty horrible. So how important are the oceans to us? You know, in the survey I did for the class, almost everybody in class admitted that the oceans are one, you know, crucial to our survival. So a couple statistics prove that. Uh, 3.5 billion people a year rely solely on the ocean for their food. And fish provides the most uh, protein source in our, uh, in our culture and in our society. So we get most of our protein from fish and from the ocean. So it's very important. If the ocean becomes sick, then we become sick because we ride, we're, you know, part of, we're a symbiotic you know, relationship. One dies, the other one dies. So why is shark finning a problem? Well, the world's shark population has declined by 99% in the last 100 years. Over 80% of that's been within the last 50 years. And why has this come about? Well, you know, different things. Uh, shark fin soup is the biggest one. But, you know, now most sharks are either considered endangered, critically endangered, and a lot of them are on the verge of extinction. And the number one cause of this is overfishing. Overfishing, we are killing them off in such high numbers that they can't possibly recover. And one of the reasons they can't recover is because of their really slow reproductive rate. You know, young sharks, it takes... 15 to 20 years for them to uh, become sexually mature. And once they get to that point, it takes another one or two years for uh, the gestation period before they have the pups. And then another one to two years after that to rest in between mating. So you're looking at an incredibly long reproductive cycle and uh, overfishing that we're doing, there's no way they can possibly keep up. So I want to talk to you a little bit about shark fin soup and the history. Uh, it started in the Ming Dynasty. Uh, it was started by the Emperor of China. He started serving this at official banquets and stuff because he wanted to show how powerful and wealthy and generous he was. And since he started doing that, it kind of stuck in Chinese culture and became a status symbol for wealth and power and uh, you know political status. So a social status, and it's gone there in any sense. And the reason this has become such a problem lately is because the middle class in China and the Asian countries has exploded. The amount of wealth being generated has exploded, and therefore the availability of shark fin soup to the masses has become more prevalent. So there's the demand for shark fin soup has blown up exponentially. So it's just furthered this trade. Um, you know, another part of the, uh, according to the Wild Aid uh, firm, they say that 83% of Chinese have tried shark fin soup at some point in their life. That's pretty huge numbers. So how are these sharks processed? This is where it gets into the barbaric part. So these sharks are caught on long lines, you know, sometimes eight miles long, 
uh, nets, whatever, they're gaffed, drug up on board while they're still alive, and then while they're still alive, they cut off their fins, and it's pretty brutal. Uh, and then they take the rest of the shark and they kick it off the boat into the water where it sinks to the bottom of the ocean and they slowly suffocate and die. You know, and words can't really describe this, so I got a video here. Can, can you do that? Did I do it? Oops. This video here uh, can put it in better perspective. All right, well, we'll move on. Having a little technical yeah. difficulty. So uh, all, these, all these sharks are going uh, mostly to the Asian restaurant market. That's where uh, they're getting used the most. So it's, it's a pretty sad thing. It's been a battle that's been ongoing for a long time. Uh, not a lot of headway has been made, but there has been some progress made. Um, some of the things that are being done, you know, due to overwhelming international pressure, uh, by the international market. The views in Asia are starting to come around and change a little bit. The younger generation is starting to come around. Uh, there's been a movement in place since 2006. Uh, you know, Yao Ming, the, you know, the big uh, basketball player and stuff, they started it. And uh, it start, in 2012, it started to come, you know, to where it started making a little bit of a difference. Uh, China actually, in 2012, uh, made a ban on shark fin imports. And then uh, the China Daily also did an article that came out with uh, proof that they tested shark fins that were being consumed and found that there was high levels of cadmium and methylmercury. So they basically found out they, they were poisoning themselves by eating these things. So uh, in 2012, due to this article and the research that was done, officials in China decided to stop serving uh, shark fin soup at their official banquets. So this was a big uh, step in the right direction because you know usually the population follows what the government leads. So this, this has made a difference and uh, recent studies have shown uh, there's been a 50 to 70 percent drop in, China, uh, in shark fin soup consumption in China. So it is starting to make a difference and there's been a 20 to 30 percent drop in uh, shark fin imports. So uh, the price of fins have come down a little bit recently to where some countries in Africa have stopped fishing for sharks, but it, it's still a big problem out there. So what can we do to help? Well, we can uh, sign petitions, uh, you know, asking our governments to help make these changes. Uh, several states and provinces in the United States and uh, Canada have actually started banning shark fin soup. Um, we can support uh, ecotourism. So uh, one of the big uh, inroads that's been made in this movement is a lot of the conservation groups uh, started going to these countries that this was going on in, and they started teaching them that, hey, people from all over the world will come and see your stuff and will enjoy it. And if you have this live shark here, when you got millions of people coming to see it, that's tourism dollars feeding into your economy and they're worth way more than a dead shark. If a sh dead shark's worth, you know, a hundred bucks, all these tourism and stuff and dollars is worth millions of dollars. So they started hitting these countries on the economic level, and it's uh, really started making a big difference. Uh, since that's happened, a lot of these countries have uh, turned their waters into uh, marine sanctuaries. So they've uh, started protecting these sharks. Some of them are even uh, capturing uh, poaching boats and sinking them. So uh, there is being progress made, but there's a whole lot more that still needs to be made. So uh, one of the things we can do is uh, to help support ecotourism, go into these places, you know, spend your money there and you know, visit and show them that this is the right path to be on, that uh, they got beautiful things that, uh, that are there that people come to pay to see. So you can also talk to your local Asian restaurants and if they offer uh, yu chi or fish wing soup, it's really shark fin soup, uh, you can ask them to stop serving it and uh, kind of explain to them what the problem is. Uh, that's one way. 
So we need a whole lot more of the ecotourism, the enjoying nature uh, and its beauty, and a whole lot less of the mass slaughter. So in closing, so in closing, it is our duty to put forth to us by God to be good stewards of what he has created. We have an obligation to protect and preserve the lower life forms that we lord over. Everything on this planet we call home is part of the great circle of life. If we destroy the other parts of the circle, everything collapses. And we must not let this happen on our watch. It's our duty to protect these and to be good stewards of what we have. Amen. Thank you very much. That's all I got. Thank you so much.